Hello. Hi, Dr. Wolford. Alan Logan. Glad to see you. How are you? I brought my lunch. Oh, you did? Great. Uh, I've come to see Roy Walford in Venice, California. For 30 years, Dr. Walford has been studying the relationship between food and long life. Better if it were like whole wheat bread. Whole wheat bread. Because instead of, uh, I would say that's two slices of white bread. Well, let's see what else you have. You probably don't like this. Sometimes I like something crunchy while I have the sandwich. Well, pretzels are empty calories. Yeah. So I don't like that. <laughs> How about pickles? Okay, yeah, that's all right. This yeah. is all just for taste. How do you feel about mustard? It doesn't add much in the way of calories unless you use a huge amount. <laughs> for Walford, watching calories is only one of the keys. He believes if you eat less, you'll live longer, so long as you make sure that what you do eat has high nutritional value. I'm aiming to make a pretty low-cal lunch, no more than 500 calories. You use a lot of calories getting the pickle yeah. jar. Oh, yes, that's know. the whole point. This is about it. This is what okay. I could... Now, now see, that wouldn't be enough, though. I mean, I'd, I'd still yes. be interested yes. more. I'd probably eat five or six of these pretzels. Yeah. And I would, uh, I would take the... I would take the salt off the pretzels, because I don't, I don't like to eat a lot of salt. Then... I would have probably, to make myself feel better, I'd either have about four ounces of frozen yogurt or uh, if I was feeling really uh, healthy, health-minded, I'd have an apple. Well, let's say an apple. Okay. I'll give myself the be benefit of the doubt. Okay. Now let's see what kind of nutrition my low-cal lunch delivers. At the moment, uh, let's see, turkey breast. No skin roasted is about as close, and you didn't have half a breast, but maybe a quarter of a breast. You had a piece of tomato in that. Yeah, two, two little slices. Okay. Of when you add it all up, I did fine on the calories, but that's about all. What you had is deficient in A, B12, C, E, folic acid, and panathenic acid. Among minerals, it's deficient in calcium, copper, magnesium, manganese, and zinc. And what's that big, tall, yellow one? What's that? I would see well, that means okay it has there. a great deal of sodium. Oh, <laughs> <which you don't laughs> doing want. fine with yeah. the sodium. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you have too much cholesterol because you multiply. Where did I get that from? Like or the, the turkey, turkey, probably. Yeah. But here's what goes into Walford's lunch. Every one of his 500 calories packs a high nutritional punch. How did you first get interested in this? I got interested in this kind of nutrition because it's been known since 1935 that if you keep animals on a very low calorie diet, but one that is not deficient in vitamins and so forth, you extend their maximum lifespan and their average lifespan. In the 1960s, Walford, who's a researcher at UCLA Medical School, set out to refine the low-calorie studies. He confirmed that laboratory mice live up to twice the normal age if calorie intake is reduced by up to half. At the same time, he detected intriguing signs of improved health, lower blood pressure, lower insulin and cholesterol, and stronger immune systems. Then in 1991, Walford joined Biosphere 2 as the project doctor. He was part of the team that sealed itself inside a three-acre greenhouse. The aim was to be self-supporting, to subsist entirely on the miniature ecosystems growing inside. Things didn't turn out as expected. Food production was about 40% short, but for Walford, it was a lucky accident. Like it or not, the team found itself on a low-calorie, high-nutrition diet. The team members went hungry. But in regular medical exams, Walford discovered they were developing the same good health patterns as the lab animals. Biosphere 2 confirms for Walford that a low-calorie, high-nutrition diet is likely to benefit humans. And he's been following it ever since. It sounded pretty good to me. How do you get started? What you want to do is lower the calorie content so that you lose weight gradually until you're 10 to 
20% below your set point, where your set point is defined as what you would weigh normally if you ate just kind of a normal diet. That sounds like a, a lot of... Uh... A lot of weight loss. I mean, I'd be I'd be a beanpole without the beans. I think. I mean, that was very uh, uh, sounds severe to me. These lively rhesus monkeys are on just such a severe regimen. I'm visiting Rick Weindrick at the University of Wisconsin. Is this for my protection or for the monkeys? I think it's mutual for both. Yes. Okay. Weindrick has about 80 monkeys, half on restricted calories half normal. The study has been running for a decade and the animals are now 20 years old. Middle age for rhesus monkeys. So there won't be any results on lifespan for a while. Well, which kind is what um, you get? This guy up above? The restricted diet is exactly like Walford's. In fact, Rick Weindrick was his student at UCLA. Here you go, pal. The monkey's calories are reduced, but their nutrition is excellent. It's not in any way a starvation diet. So within the next few years, as old age should be approaching, the expectation is that the normally fed group will begin to lose its health, while the calorie restricted group will stay healthy. We're starting to see signs of better health in our restricted animals. It's going to really be, shall we say, showtime uh, for these diets uh, over the next five years. Just like Walford's Biosphere team, the monkeys get regular checkups, although they're sedated for some procedures. This is a scan for bone mass, which tends to become reduced with age. They also examine tiny samples of muscle from the monkeys, looking for signs of cellular damage, which normally develops with age. Is this a, a part of a cell? This is a component of a cell, and this is the stuff that makes your muscles contract, basically. Uh -huh. This black dot in the muscle of a four-year-old monkey is damage caused by things called free radicals. Free radicals could explain why eating less helps you stay healthier and live longer. Nutrients from the food we eat get absorbed by every cell of our body. These nutrients normally combine with oxygen to make essential energy storing chemicals. But an unavoidable byproduct is the production of free radicals, reactive oxygen compounds that damage whatever they hit. The body makes chemicals called antioxidants which defend against free radicals. But damage still accumulates over the years leading to all kinds of old age diseases. The exciting thing about Weindrick's study is that while 20-year-old monkeys on normal diets show extensive free radical damage, calorie-restricted monkeys who were the same age look like young kids. So this is a 17-year-old monkey with about the same amount of free radical damage as how old a monkey? Uh, a four-year-old. A 17-year-old as healthy as a four-year-old. Yes. Others aren't. That's Weindrick right. is also pursuing the free radical theory with a large-scale mouse study. So one, one bunch is on a restricted diet and one... Is, oh, God. <laughs> I'll tell you something that I see right away. These are really active. And these are just sitting around. These are senior citizen mice, about two years old. And they're on a normal diet. And these are on calorie restriction. But Weindrick also has four other groups being fed normal diets, plus some special extra ingredients. He's adding combinations of the antioxidant supplements like vitamin C, E, and beta carotene that so many of us are taking now. The results so far? Not very encouraging. Antioxidant dietary supplements are no substitute for calorie restriction. They don't seem to affect lifespan one way or the other. The uh, best survival at this point in time is uh, group five, our calorically restricted animals. Who aren't taking any supplements? No, no, they're not. They're just... So, eating. so far taking supplements, if you have a normal diet, or any kind of diet, it doesn't, 
doesn't make you live longer so far, and you have a lot of time to go yet on this. At this but so point, far, you, you, you're living the longest. Just plain old caloric restriction. With high nutrition. Right. But again, it's early. So it's, come back in a year, yeah, please. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, I'm taking the pills. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so, Alan, I made four servings in the wooden bowl. This is one serving. And it's about 500, 550 calories. This is one serving? This is a lot of food. That would be one serving, yes. So and this is equal to that uh, sandwich I made? More or less, it's about equal in calorie content to your turkey sandwich. It's very good. How old do you think you're going to be eventually? Well, older than I would be. I've just been on this diet for about 10 years or so, maybe a little more. So I certainly didn't start when I was young. If my destiny on a normal diet had been to live to be 90, then on the diet I should add another 15 or 20 years. So that would put me out to be 110, starting at 60. That's where it would put me if I started around now. 110. See, I always thought it'd be nice to live to 106. 110 is even better. This doesn't look so appetizing anymore. I got plenty of crunch. I didn't need the pretzels. And uh, this wouldn't be bad for a dessert, or am I denied dessert now? No, that would be fine, sure. An apple is good dessert. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you would... Uh, your heart would sink if I took out the frozen yogurt, probably. Well, no, yours would. <laughs>